Hello and welcome back to this episode of 8-Bit Unboxing, where I'm going to unbox all the stuff that you guys have sent me during the month of January 2018. Now, the last three episodes I've done of unboxing, I remember thinking to myself, this is going to be the last episode. <laughs> and and the, the reason I think that is because I'm turning down so much stuff that I, I just don't think I'm going to have enough items received to put together to make a, a good video. I mean, the video might be two minutes long, right? So uh, nevertheless, uh, I've been surprised and uh, each month I've still managed to get enough stuff in to put together a video and this month is no exception. In fact, I actually managed to receive several items on my want list and some other cool items as well. So uh, let's dig right in. The first package of the month comes from Michael Lathbury or Lathbury, something like that. It's quite heavy for its size. Um, eight bit guy, please read. <laughs> Ah, a Commodore 64 inspired design. Very nice. And in the box, we have a loose iOmega Ditto drive. Okay, thank you, Michael. Moving on, I have an apparently anonymous package since there's no sender name. Ah, there's a note. Looks like this is from Billy, and it's a bunch of C64 games. So a lot of people are wondering why I would be accepting all of these games. Well, most of the games I had growing up in the 80s were pirated copies, and even the original titles I had have all been lost. So I'm sort of building a C64 software library for the first time. And while I'm familiar with a lot of these, quite a few of these games I've never even heard of. So at some point I'll have to sit down and try them out. Uh, thank you, Bill. Next package is from C. Harmon. Okay, so we have computer magazines. Rainbow. Uh, that was dedicated to the TRS-80 color computers. Uh, this should help in research I'm doing on those for an eventual video. Since I didn't grow up with these machines, I'm trying to learn about them after the fact, and these are like little time capsules to the past, so this should help out a lot. I noticed these two are from 1984 and 1986, so each one is from a slightly different time. On the other hand, I'm mystified by the inclusion of this amazing Spider-Man comic. It appears to be from 1991. I've never been much into Spider-Man, but maybe I'll read it. Anyway, uh, thank you, C. Harmon. Okay, next up is a big old box. Uh, this one is uh, also an anonymous sender. I feel like I'm extracting giant insect eggs from a nest or something. Yeah, I'm still getting the feeling this is a cocoon of some kind. There's no obvious place to start trying to unwrap it. I guess I'll just start slicing into it. This stuff goes deep. I'm afraid to cut too aggressively for fear of damaging whatever it is that's inside. Which at this point still remains a mystery. Now I feel like I'm peeling an onion or something. <laughs> Funny thing is, I can actually see the item and I still have no idea what it is. Okay, mystery solved. It's an MSD dual disk drive for the Commodore 64. These are pretty rare these days. This one has apparently been modified some. So let's see what's in the smaller package. Look at that, it's a CMD RAM link. This was an aftermarket memory expansion for the Commodore 64. These are also kind of rare. Uh, very nice, thank you anonymous sender. Okay, on to the next package. This is from Michael Conrad. I like that font used for the 8-bit guy as I chop right through it. All right, looks like we have Sega Master System games. As you might imagine, there's a Master System video on the horizon. He also sent me the light gun. So here's a better look at all the titles. I'm looking forward to trying these out. I especially love the cartridge style of this console. Uh, thank you, Michael. Next up, somebody sent me a Black & Decker food processor. <laughs> well, let's hope not anyway. This is from Terry Hitt. Let's see what's really inside. Ah, yes, this has been on my want list for some time. This is the uh, Timex Sinclair 1500. But wait, there's more. The Sinclair Personal Printer. Very neat. Uh, but wait, there's more. Uh, let's see what's in this little bag. Uh, looks like a pocket computer of some kind. Interesting. A Casio. I have not seen this model before. But the screen is larger than I've seen on this type of computer before. Oh, it even has batteries in it. Cool. Looks like it has a four-line display. I would have loved something like this back when I was a kid. Let's open up the Sinclair 1500 and have a look. Wow, looks almost brand new. Very nice. Thank you, Terry. Next up is a little envelope from Alex Eisenhut. OK, 
Okay, cool. I remember the email about this. Uh, this is a really unusual type of floppy disk. It's three and a quarter inches in size. I've never seen one of these before. It looks like a cross between a five and a quarter inch disk and the more common three and a half. I'm not even sure what system would use a disk like this. So for comparison, here's the two most common disk types from the 80s. And here's the three and a quarter inch. So yeah, it's ever so slightly smaller than a three and a half inch. Well, this will make a neat collectible. Thank you, Alex. All right, here's another box. This one is from Ryan's Game Room. Looks like another box of Commodore games. Yeah, it looks like a bunch more games I didn't have. Let's lay them out so they're easier to see. Interestingly enough, I have never played or even heard of most of these. Um, I've played Sky Fox and Ace of Aces. Um, the rest are total mystery to me. Um, thank you, Ryan. Up next is a box from Timothy Nelson. Looks like four different Odyssey 2 games. UFO. I wonder if this is related to the old TV show called UFO. Um, I like the way these boxes sort of double like a jewel case. And yes, there will eventually be a video on this console, maybe sometime this year. Uh, thank you, Timothy. Moving right along, here's a box from Andrew Kebby. Well, here's a power supply and some batteries. And in this smaller little package, there's an Atari Lynx game. I suppose that answers what's in the other package. Yep, and here it is, an Atari Lynx. I've never played one of these before. Well, uh, since he sent me some batteries, I suppose I should fire it up and see if it works. Okay, apparently it won't work without a game installed. So let's try putting this in there. Okay, now it's coming to life. Odd, I wasn't expecting that you could play this thing sideways, but it appears this game works in portrait mode. Okay, uh, well, thank you, Andrew. When I get some more games, maybe I'll do a video on it. Moving right along, I have another big box, and this one is from an anonymous sender. Ah, look at that. It's like a smooth sea of packing peanuts. <laughs> well, it looks like we have a box in a box. Well, now that that's out, I suppose I better check really good that there isn't anything hiding in the bottom. There wasn't, so let's open box number two. Alright, looks like Timex Sinclair stuff. So yeah, this is the Sinclair 2068, which is sort of like an American version of the Sinclair Spectrum, although it's not totally compatible. Looks like a little cartridge ROM slot here. And there's just really basic ports on the back. Okay, uh, thank you Anonymous, you'll be seeing this again in the future. Okay, here's the next box. Uh, this one is from Don Jordan. We're getting close to the end here. Look at that, it's a blueberry clamshell. So when I said I didn't have one of these, I got like 10 offers for one immediately. However, upon asking for photos, I found that all of them uh, being offered were actually indigo models, so I turned them down. However, I could tell this was a real blueberry. So I should have all the clamshell colors now. I hope to do an updated video on this line of computers sometime this year. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape, except that it's missing the leaf on the Apple logo, which is not all that uncommon. Hopefully I can find a replacement for that. Anyway, uh, thank you, Don. One more box here. This one is from Kazoo Kuroi? <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce that. Um, here's a note. Oh look, the name is pronounced Kazuo Kuroi. And it looks like uh, he sent me another Timex, so I'm not sure how this happened. In fact, this whole month seems to be a Timex month. Um, I think I had two people offering me the same thing, and I didn't realize they were two different people. I get a hundred emails a day, so uh, it's hard to remember specific names. Oh well, at least this one comes in the original box. Uh, well, let's uh, at least take it out of the box and have a look. Interesting that the foam says Timex Sinclair 2000, but uh, this is clearly a 2068. Looks like it came with some kind of tutorial cassette. And a manual. Cool. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Kazuo. Okay, two more boxes snuck in at the last minute while filming this. Uh, this one is from Sergi, the same guy who designed and produced those little AdLib cards I showed in a previous episode. Not sure what he's sending me here. Okay, apparently it's some kind of 3D printed case for the OPL2 LPT card. Let me grab mine right quick and uh, we'll see how this fits. 
Well, that's pretty nice. I uh, just have to screw it together now. Uh, by the way, I do have these back in stock. Not the case, but the kit. And for the last box, uh, this is from Brandon Mills. All right, let's see if we can end the month with a bang. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Yeah, I remember this offer, uh, VIC-20 Paddles. Um, I've actually always used Atari Paddles on my VIC-20 and C64, so uh, this is cool to finally have some official Commodore Paddles. Neat. I don't think that many games use these, but uh, still, very neat to have. Uh, thank you, Brandon. All right, so that about wraps it up. I did want to take a moment to thank everyone for all the generous donations that were sent, and as well as all of the people who offered stuff to me and I was unable to accept it, most likely due to lack of space. So uh, anyway, um, hopefully we'll have some good stuff next month too. So uh, stick around and uh, thanks for watching.